Arsenal is hosting Fulham at the Emirates Stadium tomorrow and it's going to be at 17 hours that's when the game is going to be playing down in United Kingdom that is London welcome to this channel that is Rokan Media Football with the football or the match preview as far as this team of football is really concerned smash the like button comment and share if you're really watching us for the very first time whenever to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily rockan david is my name and we've gonna hit obviously put up lots of things onto this channel hope you guys are really enjoying it and we want to obviously speed up this such that you guys get ready for the Mikel Arteta Pressa that is going to be airing in the next one hour from the time of recording. Now, <clears throat> it's really a very big day. It's a Friday. Uh, Juma Karim to all the Muslim viewers and subscribers so let's your day enjoy it and may Allah grant you the best of success that you guys deserve. Getting to this game of football <laughs> of Arsenal versus Fulham. Fulham has gone a very huge boost of a player called Paulina. Paulina to me was the best was one of the best central defensive midfielders in the Premier League in the season of 2022-2023. They bought him from Sporting Lisbon and they bought him to Fulham and he's doing wonders. And also surprised that big teams never went in for him this summer. I don't know because of his age, but if I told Chelsea, if I told Man City can send Kovacic when he's obviously nearing his 30s, why not also see another team saying in Paulinia because they were going to have to get him on a chip. Though the manager of Fulham came out and said that he is a £90 million player. <laughs> that is it. That is Paulinia for you. So, he's returning <laughs> from injury. He never played one of the games they really played um, and they really lost and I think won one. That is it. And the other player is... Um, there is a player they sent off. What is his name? Um, there is a player that was sent off. Um, what is the name of the guy? It's called Reem. He was given much start of orders as he really played over the weekend. So that means he's all out. But Arsenal have some good injury boosts. Zinchenko is back in the mix. Um, there is a... Uh, Gabriel Jesus also back in the mix. He's back in full <clears throat> Arsenal training. I brought you the story yesterday night. Um, Rest Nelson is back also, and very many other players. Those the absentee is only one. That is Julian Timber. <laughs> that is it. meaning that the Arsenal team is really fully, 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 fully packaged, and it's all about Mikel Arteta. To come with round obviously get us the best from his team of Arsenal over <laughs> the weekend. Remember, last season when they hosted Fulham, it ended to one. Remember, Gabriel Magales gifted that ball to Mitrovic, and Mitrovic really put Fulham ahead. Then Odegaard leveled the game, and Gabriel Magales scored the winner. In the return leg at the Craven Cottage, Arsenal won it by three goals from Hill. In that game, Leandro Tross had made what you call a hat trick of assists to Gabriel Martinelli, Granite Xhaka, and um, which other player scored in that game? Was it Bukayo Saka? So that is what he had to do in that beautiful game of football. So Arsenal is hosting this third, sorry, their second game of the season at Emirates, and this is going to serve as their third game after beating <coughs> after beating Crystal Palace over the weekend. Sorry, on Monday by one goal. And remember that game, Tomiyasu was given matching orders after really getting his second book of offense. Was after getting a second yellow card, and he was really told to walk off field of play, meaning that he's not part of this beautiful game of football here onto the Rokani Media Football. So that is it. But for Arsenal, they are geared up, Declan Rice raising the level in the game of Crystal Palace, and Kai Havertz has gone ahead to cover more distance than any Arsenal player in the previous two games gonna hate to play. But we all know that Arsenal doesn't keep clean sheets at home, by the way. This is the rarest, the rarest thing I saw last season. But this time around, they've gone ahead also not to keep a clean sheet in their first game because Nottingham Forest scored a goal, passed them, and um, as it stands, 
it obviously puts them in a situation where you really anticipate that maybe Fulham will obviously get a goal. But the big question is on Gabriel Magales, whether he's going to come in the mix. Is Thomas Partey going to be kept into the right back position of Arsenal? All that and more into the predicted starting 11 that is really starting right about now. Now, let's start it off here in a very different style altogether. The system <coughs> is uh, a 4-3-3 system. That's what Mikel Arteta has gone in for. And <coughs> the big question is what of David Dreyer or Ramsdale. I think it's Ramsdale again for me. It's Ramsdale again for me being in between the stitches for Arsenal and giving us the best of football that we want to see from a player like Aaron Ramsdale of his stature. Then, <coughs> David Raya, you know, is putting in competition, but I anticipate that maybe David Raya is going to start coming in through to be in between the stitches after the international break. Because after the international break, that's when Champions League football is going to kick in. And it will be very easy for Mikel Ateta to bench Aaron Ramsdale, you know, over the weekend and start him in between the week when Arsenal is playing the Champions League. So I believe that's going to be the pattern and um, we'll see sometimes Ramsdale being benched for the Champions League game and uh, and uh, <coughs> David Raya given a chance to start. But I think Ramsdale is going to start in goal again tomorrow as Arsenal takes on Fulham. It's another London derby that Arsenal is going to hate to win very many times. And last season, they almost won all the London derbies. Not so. And home and away. Right back, Thomas Partey. I think he is going to hate to show to it that Ateta wants him to be played that side because he wants to facilitate one of the players into that midfield. That is Declan Rice. That is Thomas Partey. He's expected to play as a right back. And he's going to be facing his former Arsenal teammate known as William. William is coming in through to obviously play on the left attacking side of the midfield for West Ham. We go to the left back. I think Zinchenko this time round. There is no way to hide. Ateta has to play Zinchenko into that position because um, because Tomiyasu, who already started in the game of Crystal Palace and came on through <laughs> in the game of Nottingham Forest when Julian Timber was injured, is not available in this game. He's going to be ready for the game of Manchester United. I think Zichenko is going to come into the mix. On the right side of the central defense is going to be William Saliba alongside Benjamin White. That is it. I don't anticipate that Gabriel Magal is going to come in through and obviously play any game of football into the mix. So, that is the back five of Arsenal. I anticipate him to start and line up like that. That is Arsenal for you. So, the central midfield, I think this is the dream midfield for Mikel Arteta. And it's going to be Declan Rice in the single pivot for the very first time he played the single pivot for Arsenal in a competitive game. That is Declan Rice for you. And he really played very well. Now, if I told you played very well when Arsenal was playing away from home at Selhurst Park, how do you think he's going to look like when Arsenal is playing at the Emirates? I think he might put in a performance that might outbeat that of Mandy. That is it, Declan Rice. But he had a very beautiful game on Monday and he looked like a 105 million pound player alongside him is going to be Kai Havertz obviously and Martin Odegaard I've seen people having lots of cases to answer about Kai Havertz but Ateta knows that physicality and tenacity is needed in that midfield so he has gone ahead to add two busy buddies that really act as steady eddies in that midfield that is Declan Rice and Kai Havertz running, covering a lot of space, interceptions, and they are good at keeping that ball. Alongside Martin Odega, the captain of the team, who has always gone ahead to put in shifts that have been called in for left, right, and center for the team of Arsenal. And he scored that only penalty that saw Arsenal beat the side of... beat the side of Crystal Palace by one goal to me. So I anticipate that the midfield is going to be like that because... Ateta wants that midfield to look so and he wants them to obviously get to know each other together and put up the magic and I only worry sorry I only have a very huge question about that midfield next Sunday when they are hosting my team known as Manchester United that's where the big question is but I believe he's really going to put in the required shift as 
a manager of Arsenal. <laughs> we go to the front three. Obviously, the right forward, that is Bukayo Saka, no doubts. Though he is not going to hate to have... He never had a good game against Crystal Palace, but I really believe he is going to have a good one at home because he's going to be having 60,000 fans of Arsenal cheering for him. They love him a lot and he's going to head to not disappoint them at the stadium. On the left, very huge question, Trossard, Rest Nelson, Emily smith Rowe, or Gabriel Martinelli. I think Ateta is obsessed with Gabriel Martinelli, though from here I would have gone ahead to give Trossard a chance to start in these games. But Ateta wants Martinelli to get to where he ended last season from, scoring with 16 goals a season. That is the main man for you, that is Gabriel Martinelli. Leading the line with Jesus returning. Balogan moving out. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> you anticipate that it's none other than Edin Ketia because he has gone ahead to show to it that he is really good. He deserves a chance scoring in the first game, having an assist in the second game. That is awful. That is very, 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 very impeccable for Edin Ketia, meaning that he needs to be given a starting position. As Gabriel Jesus. Is returning from injury, you don't anticipate that to say it is that Ateta starts him in this game. He's going to start to bring him on slowly by slowly, so to it that he matches the fitness levels of his fellow teammates. So that is my predicted starting eleven of Arsenal. Aaron Ramsdale in goal, Benny sorry, Pate right back, left back Zichenko, central defense partnership. Saliba, right side of the central defense, and Ben White on the left side of the central defense. They help Arsenal build well from the back. Declan Rice, Martin Odegaard, Kai Havertz. That is the midfield three, as the four three forwards include Martinelli, Nketiah, and Bukayo Saka. Saka, right forward, Martinelli, left forward, and Eddie Nketiah, a center forward through the middle. But Arsenal comes into this game when it's one of the three teams that have gone ahead to register maximum points. Maximum points. And those three teams are Brighton, Man City, and Arsenal. The rest of the teams have gone ahead to draw, lose, and they're having four or three points. It shows you that they are really fired up to see that they don't drop any point. They've not started playing their style of football like they did last season. They tried a little bit for the first half against Crystal Palace. But I think with time, Arsenal are going to find themselves in a position of playing <laughs> their best football. And it's good for Arsenal to start off like this. Because if you start off angrily and end the season very well, that is music to ears for the Arsenal fans all over the world. So, as it stands, it's all about... Arsenal hosting the side of Fulham in another London derby. They've so far won their first London derby away at Crystal Palace, 1-0. Are they winning this one? I anticipate they are winning it by three goals to nil. I believe Arsenal is going to explode tomorrow. They're exploding and they are going to put every, or they're going to throw everything at Fulham and they are going to obviously beat Fulham. However much Paulinho is back, I believe Arsenal really has a much more stronger side than that side. So, your predictions are welcome in the comment section below. I go for a 3 0 win for Arsenal at Emirates, although they rarely keep clean sheets at Emirates. I obviously give them a clean sheet, a clean sheet because Fulham has lost Mitrovic. Emirates is good, but he needs to obviously find himself mixing up with the magic of the already available players at the Fulham team. A sign out for now. See you later. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living to God bless you abundantly. And for the Muslim viewers and subscribers, Juma Karim.